the bright side of Staffordshire. Lou Temple, welcome to the UK. We've brought you over to Stoke on Trent. How are you finding it? Oh, it's lovely. It's uh, it's an amazing day. Uh, physically outside it's beautiful and apparently you always have this type of weather on your show um the fans or as we like to refer to them as the audience they are um entirely polite and engaged and and well-versed and i'm always impressed that they know so much about the show particularly the walking dead or a film that you do and, and they they bring so much of their enthusiasm with them and and uh, oftentimes uh but, you know, my job at these things is is to kind of disconnect their nervousness, just mm-hmm. to let them be themselves around us, and and um, and then they really get to, you know, show their their enthusiasm about who they are and what they like. So it's been great. Uh, everybody's been, you know, wonderful, and the cosplay's been really good. Yeah, it's, we're it's going to nice see some of that in a minute or two. But oh, yeah, good. you're in people's living rooms like week in week out, so. You come to meet these people in the families. It's a big thing for those, and they do come out in the hundreds to do so. Um, you've been to other places in the UK doing other conventions. Sure. You've been over visiting and working. But um, how have you found Stoke on Trent? I know you've only been here a little time. How have you found it, and what do you know about Stoke? Well, the first thing I know is uh, its heritage in, in potting, okay. as, as pottery goes. And I find that to be um, so interesting because it's... Uh, it's it's a craft yes and and i think that in general there's a heritage of craftsmen here or people that uh, that understand a skill and so i i think that when you do something with a skill uh you take a lot of pride in that yeah. so inherently i notice i recognize a lot of pride um you know like the states there are all different uh pockets of cultures and i um uh learned quickly that that this area in um staffordshire staffordshire yeah is where we are is is uh its own culture and its own uh its own dialect its own mannerism yes. its own sort of uh pride which i uh i find interesting in the states we generalize mm-hmm the United Kingdom quite easily. Like an Austin Powers movie. It, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, starting way back with Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. You know? yeah, I yeah. Mean, but, but even still, even a little bit more so, um, we recognize, obviously, London and, and East London, and then we sort of venture to Wales. Yeah, yeah. And we sort of recognize that northern thing to be just Welsh. Mm-hmm. Or, or Irish, but distinctly different Irish than Welsh. Uh, that's north Brit- britain uh but now when we start to talk about manchester uh liverpool which is entirely different mm-hmm. and we start to hear these different dialects or these different types of people and and their personalities which are what we're meeting here the fan base you start to understand like the states every place has its own personality yeah. and and i i find that what we're experiencing particularly in television is we're starting to to flesh out those personalities and where we're, we're probably not so good that we can say Manchester, Yorkshire, yeah. those types of things, but we are, we, I think we can recognize the Midlands okay. or we're starting to. So I, I appreciate that. And I, I respect, uh, I respect that a lot because for instance, we do a lot of television shows about our rural of society, which would be the South, yeah. where I'm from. And I'm starting to recognize, because I watch a lot of BBC, that we're starting to do a lot more rural English mm-hmm. shows, not all done in the city of London, yeah. you know. So we're starting to, to venture out. And, and, then, and then as an audience, we're starting to understand a lot more of the UK. And, uh, and I think that's appreciated. Um, it's easy just to pinpoint your finger and say, well, that's London guy speaks with a british accent but i think it's i think it's a challenge to go well that's that's someone from manchester i think i'd struggle with some of the american accents because there is regional differences there yeah but uh, what you've got to say in stoke if somebody says hello you have to say oh turn up and demons is i a duck oh can you say that say i a duck to our listeners lou i a duck (laughs) <laughs> and you mentioned pottery, which yes. is really interesting. I know yeah. you did an interview for Staffs Live, which is based at the university. I did, yeah. And was, you mentioned pottery. Yes. And um, 
think about you something. Oh, oh your my little gosh. presents. I'm... Uh, a local potter uh, called oh. Emma Bailey is a big fan of yours. Oh, wow. Well, we just have to, we'd have to describe this. We'd have to make a bit of theatre right. of the mind. This so, is fantastic you... because uh, right away what we're looking at is, is a, a proper mug here uh, for my coffee. And it is, uh, it is beautifully inscribed, uh, Lou Temple, with love from Stoke. And it is, uh, it's a gorgeous, and there's the, there's the, the bottle the, kilns there, the pot banks, the bottle kilns. These are the bottle kilns here in Stoke and, uh, the manufacturing factory, which are some of them still here? There's a few. We have like this uh, lady who's done this. Her name is Emma Bailey. Emma, Miss, Miss Bailey has um, kindly made this. And, and I have to say that I, not only am I a coffee drinker, but I'm a collector of mugs. And this will sit proudly amongst uh, my collection and well used. Every morning I brew a, a cup of every morning. I'm not as much a tea person as... Uh, That's a very as, British thing. Isn't it's, it? Which is great. But we're iced tea folks, which I yeah, know the Brits can't wrap their head around. Why would you put <laughs> ice in a perfectly good hot cup of tea? <laughs> but um, I uh, I adore uh, this. This is such a kind gift. Um, yeah. yeah, the folks in Stoke have been, have been really outgoing and, and friendly and uh, happy. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm curious about Things that I, I think I recognize. There was some manufacturing here. There was some coal and steel here. And those mills, I think, have, have gone away. And A you've lot have operated now, yeah. And um, you've made different yeah. types of malls mm-hmm. or... Or uh, residences out of some of those, yeah, yeah. those, those. Which so, so we've got like, for instance, um, a lot of factories have turned into art spaces and galleries, right, and, right, and right, bars right. and restaurants. And yes. Like so I think we've just sort of adapted. Um, but yeah, still- I haven't been here long, but in my uh, my short visit, I recognized a certain amount of uh, of uh, entertainment industry. Yeah. I, yeah. I saw that there might be a few uh, hen parties and, and uh, stag parties here in town that yeah. it might be a destination. It probably was last night. Yeah. Um, let's talk Walking Dead. Of course, yes. you were axed on The Walking Dead. Uh, it was the, the name, obviously, um, synonymous with Axel Rose in America. Uh, was that ever a thing? I maybe? feel like, uh, you know, people connected it because there aren't a lot of, it's not, it's not a name that people associate normally with, outside of the rock star. Yeah. Uh, but that was entirely Robert Kirkman's build, and um, that is a, a relative of his that is uh, a cousin from back in the south in the Kentucky uh, region, and so he, he modeled that character after a, a, oh. a cousin that he had, or an uncle, I should say. And so, um, no, the Axel Rock and Roller of the Axel Rose, unfortunately, wasn't quite... Uh, the description, um, but it's got, an got, easy attachment, that's yeah, for sure. We've got a connection here because Slash was raised in Stoke on Trent. No way. Yeah, he's um, his dad and his uncle still lives over. His dad moved um, to California um, when he was a kid. No yeah, way. Yeah, he spent about I five years in Stoke. Didn't know that, so that would be entirely the yeah. rock. The rock. So he, that's he, incredible. he came back here a couple yeah. of years ago. Did, did oh, he did. Here oh, Stoke. he did. Slash did. Yeah. No way. Yeah, and it, it was called Made in Stoke. That yeah. is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, he. Uh, he ranks anywhere, and he is a big he, he he's a big player in Los Angeles. Every uh, charitable char- charitable event or or rock and roll, uh, you know, hierarchy that's being done, he's part of that, and he's really visible in, in Los Angeles as as the if so facto guitar he's a guru, just a legend. And yeah. so, and and his personality is, but he delivers just. Uh, uh, with his skill, his craft, yeah. and so maybe, maybe that's a little bit. Maybe that comes natural. It could, to be, it, it a, could, a it could be the oat cakes and yeah. the things he had over could here. Could be the skill player. Uh, yeah. You know, The Walking Dead has grown it's so large compared to when when we were working on it in season three, and and I think uh, I give so much credit to the entire staff, but but Andrew Lincoln, who's mm-hmm. a countryman, yes, uh, who's carried on. Playing. So vigilantly from being the guy yeah. to sharing the guy to so many storylines and still maintaining and still being the captain of the team. And he sets the bar and the show responds to his 
his acceptance of this incredible burden of having to carry the show and and he does it with such grace and dignity and and work ethic it's uncanny he's a fine fine actor and a great american accent as well his accent <laughs> but he works diligently i mean his work at this is it, it, it is beyond belief the the effort that he puts forth but then it shows up on the day yeah. when we see it. But his his work ethic is tireless, and it must be right. Some of us will go through and we got it. I'm close. I'm not sure I nailed it, but it, it'll it'll work. Andrew, it has to work. And and then and, and that the show has gotten so big, I think it's a real task because he doesn't have the same time to develop some of the the uh, character traits that he yeah, would love yeah. to because there's other storylines they have to get to and. So he's finding his way and adjusting entirely all the way through. Um, and, and I think he deserves so much credit. You know, he's got to share and invite a character like Negan in. Yeah. I can't stand you, but I have, you have to work for this show to work. And I need you to work and I need to help you feel comfortable and be part of this show, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, yeah. to be this awful character that's going to torment me I, that this is this must be it's, and he's so available it's to like that. a comic book because i know he is a comic book but he, he the Deegan character is like a comic yeah. villain he's like the joker he keeps popping but he could kill him but he doesn't he just keeps yeah. playing he's on the back burner all the time yeah what do you think axel would have made of the Deegan character well i don't think i think axel fundamentally is a peacemaker mm -hmm. i think he's always looking for the deal to uh let's get along and i feel like he wouldn't find any concession with Negan. Mm -hmm. So I don't get a sense that he would recognize that this would be a uh, a, a place that we could barter for, for peace. Yeah, yeah. And uh, But I, I, I think he would throw in with the effort for sure to uh, uh, to go to war. But his probably initial response let's, let's, let's keep moving. Let's not let's not let this be our destiny this fight and um uh rick's a hard guy to talk out of that you know as as much as a pacifist as some of the characters are to let's turn the cheek and go the other way uh, rick uh recognizes you know someday we're gonna have to make a stand and it might as well be right now and so i get I, and those aren't easy decisions to make no. or, or to play through so I feel like Axel would entirely support Rick, but there were times when Rick would uh, go to war with Woodbury and take Axel's friend like Oscar and get him killed. I would I, I didn't find good reason with that uh, uh, for what. So um, it's so interesting. The show is so based on borders right now, and our countries, our countries, our world isn't far off right now with yeah. what what we're dealing with and. We've all got some crazy politics happening in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, we assume it's an escape to go yeah. watch The Walking <laughs> Dead on, on Sunday or Monday, but... We live in that life. We actually, <laughs> in a bit, we are. And if, you know, I haven't seen our president don a leather jacket, but it wouldn't surprise <laughs> me, <laughs> you know, at some point if he did and carried around a baseball bat. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I have to say that I love the governor yeah. for what he presented. And I thought the governor was a really complex character. And I'm looking for those complexities to come from Negan, not finding them just yet, but I'm hoping, um, you know, as you mentioned about Negan sort of being like the Joker, the governor though, there was just this underlying, uh, compelling, interesting, guy trying to protect his daughter yeah. you know trying to you know do right his vulnerability his his hopelessness and then his man manic craziness i thought those were brilliant colors that david morrissey really painted yeah. another countryman um who i think is from liverpool Originally. Yes, yes. I'm not yeah. sure about that. I think he's been in the Beatles film, but don't quote me on that. Oh, really? You say it on the radio. Don't quote me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, so so I'm okay with Negan. I love Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He's he's a fantastic actor. To me, the scene that they did uh, in in season seven, I guess, 
uh, I will kill you. Mm-hmm. Not today, yeah. not tomorrow, but someday. That that exchange between Andrew Lincoln and Jeffrey Dean is perfect. Perfect cinema, perfect yeah. acting, perfect West End, perfect in Stratford it was, it upon was a Avon. Of fresh air, even though you thought it was yeah. the end of, of Rick again, even though yeah. that, that was a cliffhanger. It's just something that's so poignant about two men, craftsmen, connecting with each other, not letting their eyes stray from the camera zone in that moment for two minutes holding that monologue. And I recognized because I've worked with Andy that he wasn't going to let Jeffrey Dean venture away to just say some whim crazy little he, he held him right on the line and, and the tightness and the tension of that was perfect yeah. and that's good acting that re- that deserves is is worthy of awards mm-hmm. Emmys you know Oscars that kind of uh, award recognition which The Walking Dead is yet to accomplish up to this I point. Think, I think it will happen. Well, Lou, it's been amazing. To it's so you. fun to be here. Thank you yeah. for having me in no. Stoke-on-Trent. And uh, this show's been great, and the people, and, and this gift is amazing. I'm so thankful. We'll come back and bring you back again. I will so come back. It'd be my pleasure and my honor. <laughs>